In this video, we discuss natural transformations. The analogy we employ is that functors are to continuous maps in topology as natural transformations are to homotopies. Recall that if we have two continuous maps, f and g, from space x to space y, then a homotopy, h, from f to g is a continuous map, h, from the product space, x, cross the closed unit interval to y, such that h on 0 is f and h on 1 is g. Then a homotopy from f to g transforms the images of paths in x under f to the image of the path under g in a continuous way. So if you have a point in the path given by the image under f up here, there exists this continuous transformation, which you can follow by this arrow in white, to a point in the path of G. Another way to say this is that there exists no holes in between the paths as the homotopy transforms one path into another. And this will be true for any path we take in X. Now, in category theory, the proxy for the closed unit interval is the category boldface 2, which has two objects, 0 and 1, and one non-identity morphism, sigma, from 0 to 1. This is often called the walking arrow category. You can also think of it as the one simplex category. Then given a category A, we define the product category A cross 2 to have objects as pairs, little a, i, where a is an a object and i is a 2 object, and morphisms will be pairs f cross lambda, where f is an amorphism and lambda is a two morphism, being either the identity on zero, the identity on one, or sigma. We can now lift the definition of homotopy to that of a natural transformation. Given functors f and g from category A to category B, a natural transformation alpha from f to g, also written as a two cell here, is a functor alpha from a cross 2 to b, such that alpha on 0 is f and alpha on 1 is g. So this completes the analogy we gave with homotopies. The diagram above between topological spaces becomes the following diagram between categories. Here a path in a category is a path of compatible morphisms which are taken to paths in the category b under the functor f and another path under the functor g. Then the natural transformation alpha connects these paths along objects in much the same way as a homotopy connected the paths along points. And they do it in a quote unquote continuous way, which in category theory means each of these resulting squares commutes. In fact, showing each one path is transformed by alpha in a commuting way is enough to show that alpha assembles into a natural transformation as we gave in the definition. This leads us to an equivalence between our definition of a natural transformation and the more typical way it is defined in almost every textbook. Namely, the following are equivalent. One, alpha is a natural transformation. And two, there is a collection of B morphisms indexed by A objects, alpha sub A, from FA to GA, where little a is an A object, such that for each amorphism f from a to b, the following commutes. Alpha sub b of f of f is equal to g of f alpha sub a. For the proof that 1 implies 2, we assume that we are given a functor alpha from a cross 2 to b, such that alpha on 0 is f and alpha on 1 is g, as given in our definition. Then for each a object, little a, define alpha sub a to be alpha evaluated on the identity on a, sigma, where remember sigma is the only non-identity morphism in the walking category. Then for each a morphism f from a to b, since the following commutes in a cross 2, and the functor alpha preserves commuting diagrams, as all functors do, we have the following commuting in the category b. Therefore, two holds. Conversely, assume we are given such a collection of B morphisms. Then we define an assignment alpha, which takes f 
identity on 0 to f of f, f the identity on 1 to g of f, and f sigma to g f alpha a, which is also equal to alpha b f of f. And it is straightforward to verify that this assignment defines a functor, completing the proof. And as we'll see, the merit of natural transformations are that they allow us to transform one construction to another, or compare one construction with another.